Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy, the voice of New Eden, and it is April 19th, YC126, and this is the Eve Universe Show! Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it going, guys? Welcome. If you're new, settle in, like the stream, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, we are going to be jumping in. Yeah, the lazy one. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I will say... So, uh, as a follow-up to yesterday, uh, your guys' amazing kindness and support was able to give us enough new members that I got three new emotes. So, because we had three new emotes, the only, we only had one logical conclusion for what to do with this, which is I have added the three Triglavian uh, clades, Velez, Perun, and Sfarog, as emotes so we can go back to saying, show us your clades, <laughs> which I'm really excited about. Uh, that said, for those of you who are disappointed that the lazy one did not get his membership yesterday, we did actually verify that he's currently ineligible for them. And we don't think that that's going to change. So uh, lazy one, you are always you're a member. You're a you're a producer in our heart. But uh, we'll get there eventually. But everybody gets those cool emotes, or at least all the members do which you can become for just a dollar a month. I, I should just add the lazy one to my uh, supporters list. Just so I can give him that much credit, at least. Anywho, uh, so today we are actually going to return to the journey of Kato Ash properly. And I have a bit of an adventure. This time we're going to finally get around to Abyss. Now, I did find a YouTube video. Hey, Sheesh, with five gifted memberships. Sheesh doesn't learn his lessons. Still trying to give him a, a gifted sub. It goes to uh, Sketchshire Cat, Aptive, Brett, Simlad, and Gamer Cthulhu on behalf of all of them and myself and everybody who enjoys my streams. Thank you once again, Sheesh, for all of your support. You're a good dude. Uh, yeah, moral support assistant. All right, so, I mean, the lazy one is kind of like our, our, our team mascot at this point. At any rate, so today uh, we're going to go with, um, uh, well, first of all, let me explain what exactly is the Kato Ash experience for those of you who do not know. Last year in December, I, uh, I, I think it was on Christmas Eve, I decided to start a project where I create a brand new character in Eve, and I use this character as my ability to show off the various different things that newer players can do in order to be successful in EVE Online. Uh, and doing so, basically, I just start with effectively as little to, uh, to close to nothing as possible, and I show my process of, of being able to build up to it. Now, today is a little bit... I did do a little bit of prep work ahead of time. Uh, I did check out... There was a YouTuber... Hold on. I got to figure out his name. I forgot the video. Hold on. So there's this YouTuber, uh, Loru Gaming, um, who I went to go check out. He's got some good stuff, and he's the one that really has been promoting this uh, Korax build. However, when I went to go look at his Korax build uh, that he had, first of all, he didn't have it linked in the description, which is kind of unfortunate, and I will make sure to do... to. Uh, not do, be the same way. Hold on. Let's do that actually before I get any further. Uh, where is where's the edit button? There's the edit button in the description. There. Now, if you refresh, you'll be able to see it. Hey, TL07, thank you for that becoming a member. Um. any rate, so, uh, this fit, I think, is actually a little bit better than the one he did. I got this from Eve Workbench. I think I might have made a minor change to it, but let's just go over it, okay? Now, obviously, my character is pretty new. She has um, 
uh, 4 million skill points at this point, um, which isn't like brand new, but you know, I, I still have my million free SP that I got for using my uh, uh, referral code, which you can get one down below if you haven't gotten your free million SP. But um, as you can see, like this ship fits fine and all that sort of stuff. So this should be fine for pretty much anybody. What we have here for a fit is we've got, um, where is it? We have seven Arbalist Compact Light Missile Launchers. Um, you could theoretically go with T2. I don't know if it'll fit, um, but I also doubt I had the skills for them yet. Hold on, let me go check. No, I, I would have to train uh, quite a bit in order to be able to get the T2 missile, so we're not even going to worry about that. I do have T2 small shield extenders. Uh, normally, I would look into getting uh, like a one T1 or one compact medium shield extender, but the, I mean, obviously, this one has been pretty popular both on the Abyssal Lurkers website uh, or the Abyssal Runner, yeah, Abyssal Lurkers web, Abyssal Tracker website, and um, on uh, Eve Workbench. So we're just going to try it out. The Enduring Afterburner. Enduring means that it'll take less cap, which is nice. And Compact Multispectrum. You know, I'm actually starting to wonder whether or not all of these compacts are necessary. Because, you know, I still have plenty of fitting room. If you have fitting room and you have compacts, it's worth double checking to make sure you don't have to, like... you. Yeah, see, look, I can fit... Uh... Never mind, I can't fit it. That's why. Okay, so I would need a, wow, I would need a 5% implant to be able to do that. Never mind. Compact it is. Uh, and then likewise, I do have the Tech 2 Ballistic Control Systems and uh, two, three Defense Field Extenders. Um, it might also be worth noting or checking to see whether or not, um, if I go into hardware, go to rigs, uh, shield, it's a purger. So if I check out these extender and I pull one off, I've got 14 hit points per second. If I change it to a small field purger, I'll have 15 HP per second. Okay, so there you go. I gained an extra hit points per second. Let's see if I can do it a second time. 16 hit points per second. If I can do it a third time. 18 hit points per second. I have increased our rep power by 38 percent by switching out those rigs um yeah lazy one but that, i think that that's the case so why is this the case what what's happening here i've talked about this before but i'll talk about what's actually happening in this, this particular case and this will actually be exasperated it'll it should get even better when we get to the um uh to the actual site itself but the thing here, it might actually get worse. We might want to double check it. But uh, so the way it works is that your shield has a certain number of hit points and it has a certain amount of time it takes to fully recharge those hit points. As you can see here, I have 2,244 hit points and it will recharge from zero to full in 304 seconds, okay? Which gives me that 18 hit points per second meter. Now, obviously that amount changes depending on wh where your hit points are at the peak recharge is between 25 and 30 percent but we're not even uh, paying attention to that right now okay if i go here and i turn off one of the small shield extenders i can see that my hit points goes from 2244 down to 1672 however my shield recharge does not change my shield recharge remains 304 seconds so that, that's because the, st the stat for your shield hit points and the stat for your shield, shield recharge time are completely independent of each other. However, how much shields you repair passively per second is derived from both of those numbers, right? So if you can lower the amount of time it takes for your shield to recharge, or you can increase the amount of hit points your shields have, both of these will increase the amount of shields per second that your shields will have to regenerate in order to regenerate all of your shields in the allotted time. So in this case, 
those three shield extenders were here in order to try to buff up my hit points as far as possible in order to try to help out with the uh, recharge. However, I noticed that all of my effort has gone into shield extension. I've got two shield extenders here. I've got no shield rechargers anywhere. So I figured that with my buffer so high already, I will probably get more benefit out of reducing the shield uh, recharge timer than just stacking on more and more hit points, right? Um, so these three purgers bring my time down from 593 seconds down to 304 seconds. So what I've effectively done is while I have reduced the amount of total hit points I have, I have doubled or sorry, I've also cut in half the amount of time it takes to recharge, which very nearly combined uh, almost doubles the amount of recharge I have altogether, right? Uh, if I actually turn these off without the extenders, you can see, yeah, I, I had only uh, nine hit points per second. If I had the extenders, I had 12 hit points per second. And with the purgers, I have 18 hit points per second. And that will turn to about 30 hit points per second or so at peak recharge. This is not like monumentally high, but it's definitely going to do good for what we need. So what do we need? Alzi. What's up, Alzian? Uh, also, if we have the guy who I've been chatting with in comms or in, in, in chat, this uh, wholesome entity guy, if you're, uh, if you're here, go ahead and say hi. Uh, but, so... I need two more things in order to be ready for the abyss, okay? The first thing I need is my abyss cheat sheet. I'll link it in the channel before, uh, right now. You can find it on the Notion. There's also a video where we go over it. But uh, there it is. And... Here, this is the Abyss cheat sheet. Um, obviously, there's a lot of information on here, and you're not going to learn the Abyss just by reading this. I do have a video that I go over about the Abyssal cheat sheet where I go over all the details to help you uh, understand what exactly all of this means. But basically, what you're seeing here is all of the damage types that are both done and and uh, you should do, as well as whatever E-War and whatnot and other tips that they have on this side, we have uh, the different weather effects and what kind of loot will drop from them and, of course, the environmental factors that you might run into. So this cheat sheet is super useful for uh, referring to things, although in early level Abyss, it isn't as necessary because you're not going to get very many of the fancier rats. Um, and the other thing I need is an exotic filament. I can open up the agency and go to Encounters and uh, Abyssal Dead Space in order to find out more information about Abyssal Dead Space, including going to the filaments and weather. Now, I want the one that ex it works with shields. So I'm going to go with um, this Gamma filament. It gives me a bonus to shields HP, which is going to help my passive recharge, and it gives a penalty expl to explosive resistance. Now, I'm going to want to check. I think my ship is... Yeah, my ship is kinetic locked. So even though I can get... Uh, I, I could theoretically hit um, a, a, a damage hole with doing explosive. I think it's still going to be most of the time better to do kinetic. So we're going to just continue to do kinetic. I'm going to start with a tranquil filament. T tranquil is T0. You can tell the tier of the filament by the number of notches at the top. The tranquil has zero notches. Calm is one. Agitated two. Fierce is three. Raging four. Chaotic five. And cataclysmic six. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to look at exotic or tranquil uh, gamma and buy one off the market. Uh, I don't need one. I need two. So I'm going to actually grab four because I'm going to do two runs back to back. So I need to do two runs. Actually, no, I'm going to buy more than four because I just realized that you now have to travel away from here to be able to do it. So... Uh... We're going to throw these filaments into the cargo. And let's pick up some more missiles, too, just in case. Now, I want to find a place that uh, 
I can do these these abyss in pretty easily. Now I'm in Kaldari space, which is always not the best for the kind of thing. But uh, let's see. Does this say it? Yeah, cannot be activated in point one or point nine systems. So I need a point eight or above system nearby. So I'm going to open up the map. I'm going to filter it by. Um, Geography and statistics, right? Security status. And this one's two jumps away. Looks good to me. Let's go. Hey, awesome. I'm glad to see you here. Feel free to ask any questions. Hey, bad boy smooth. 07 to you. Hope you're having a good time at work. Bad Boy Smooth is having a very good weekend. I I I, I hope he, him the best on his journeys this weekend. I'm also going to just for funsies. I'm going to move my HUD to the top by clicking on this little cheeseburger down here and going align HUD to the top. And I'm going to uh... actually. I guess I don't need local right now at all, or directional scanner for that matter. I'm going to actually lock a few things right now. Yeah, so my locking is already going down vertically. You can see you can actually change that by right clicking on this little crosshair thing at the top and go arrange uh, targets horizontally or arrange target vertically, vertically. But I like doing this because it's easier to kind of keep all the information in one place as far as I'm con am concerned. We also do have the PELD, my PELD, uh, which is PIFA. Sorry, Python Eve live damage meters uh, below me. So that way we can keep track of my, my uh, attributes and whatnot. I've stacked my missiles together by clicking the little infinity symbol right there. I'm also going to go back to the cheeseburger menu and unclick display passive modules. Now, some people actually for the Abyss want to display passive modules just so you don't accidentally burn them out. But I like to avoid the confusion. If you learned something new today, don't forget to like the stream and share it with someone else. That's how we get to know, you know, we increase player knowledge of EVE Online. So I'm going to warp to the sun and then hit control B to bring up save location. And then when I'm about maybe two AU from the sun, I'm going to hit submit. There, I've hit submit. So now that bookmark was saved at that location where I hit submit. I'm going to land on the sun. I try to always do my abyss in some sort of safe, just in case. So I'm warping back to my safe. This is also really good for uh, exploration. If you're probing, you'll want to make a little safe so that way people have to combat probe you down in order to get you. So then I open up my cargo bay. I double click in space to be able to start moving and break my landing in Vuln. Double click the filament. Select two destroyers. I need to be in a fleet. So the way I do that is I right click on myself and I go pilot form fleet with. So now I'm in a one-man fleet by myself. And I have to wait for the session change to complete. Now I can activate it, okay? Now I'm going to actually turn on my hardener before I activate. And then when I go in, you're going to see the jump portal. You're going to see the capacitor flash. And after that, you can reactivate your modules because you're already in, okay? So I'm having this spinning now so that way I can see when it shuts off. So I'm, I jump in. Sorry, I activate it first. I'm using a destroyer. I open it, and then you activate it.
Can I watch? Boom, it reset. Prop on. Partners on. One Lucifer Echo. That would be a uh, Angel Rat. Now, we can also look that because of the change in the environment, my, uh, my tank is actually... Oh, I, I went with the triple extenders. Whoops, I forgot to upgrade to the triple uh, purgers. Let's actually look for that. Hold on a second. Now that we're inside the weather, we can actually see whether or not it is better. So triple extenders it does 14 hit points per second. And triple purgers. Nope, that's the wrong one. Triple Purgers would give me 18 hit points per second. So yeah, it's still better. And it doesn't actually change very much with the weather, which I find really interesting. All right, that rat is dead. I'm going a little bit slow. That is one of the issues with an afterburner. Now, these Tranquils are going to probably present very little to any challenge at all. We'll, we'll see about doing a T1 after we do these three. You can go after the, um, the extraction nodes and subnodes. I don't... Are there any here? I don't think there are. Um, you can go after extraction nodes and subnodes. However, doing so in a frigate or a destroyer isn't very valuable because while the biocache in the center does increase in loot, like for destroyers you get twice as much loot and for frigates you get triple the loot, the ex extractor nodes and subnodes do not get multi multiplied. So they're generally speaking not worth it to go and get unless you really want the materials because like the stuff that drops from the extraction nodes and subnodes are the materials to use to build Triglavian ships and while most while well, the biocombative cache is locked to whether or not it'll give uh, isogen 10 or zero point condensate, uh, I believe that the extraction nodes can drop both. As far as cruisers go, I recommend, uh, like, if you're going to go with extraction nodes and subnodes, I strongly recommend using uh, a tractor beam. I usually use a tractor beam with my uh, Gila in order to pull nodes and subnodes out of the rocks. Otherwise, you can get bump into things and you have to travel too far to get to them, etc., etc. Hey, look, another Lucifer. This time it's a Dramiel, but it's another Angel Room. So in Tranquils, you generally speaking only end up with one rat and they are um, usually basically just a co standard combat rat. You're not going to see very much in, far in, in the ter way of like newts or webs or anything like that now angels probably will still do it because angels are fancy but um in general a lot of the worse especially like nuding rats don't really show up in t0 or tier one they only show up at, uh, in tier two and above I really like the Abyss because it's a good opportunity for you to learn how to fly, right? Like the, the rats behave much more like real people than say in missions. And it's a good, it's especially a good opportunity to learn how to manually a pilot, because even though you can kind of brain dead Abyss under the right conditions, it's like, you, there are plenty of opportunities and, and uh, like you get a lot out of being willing to do some manual piloting yourself. I, I, I do most of my piloting through double clicking in space. Um, and whatnot, rather than using just straight up approaches or or orbits or whatever. I like to call this your drills. You know, like football players have to practice like running through the tires and stuff. This is this is your this is your drill. You know, not every you know football players aren't just playing football the, the moment that they're on the field. 
you know, in a main game, you know, they practice every day, sometimes every day during the season, just practicing their fundamentals. And, you know, even though running up against a giant, like, dummy weight to push against isn't the same as actually tackling somebody, it does allow you to practice the skills. It allows you to drill those skills and, and, and hone your understanding of the situation. And likewise, this is how one can become a good pilot. I tried a few with the Gila, but I feel the old bros make better money in Wormhole or Null. This is great for new bros to learn to pilot. Uh, at its highest levels, the Abyss can be one of the most lucrative things in the whole game. Like, uh, if you get to, like, Tier 5, Tier 6, which is what a lot of those Gila pilots are doing, you're going to be making, like, anywhere from 100 to a billion isk an hour, depending on 4, 5, or 6. Oh, I, why am I not even... I'm not even shooting at this rat. It helps to shoot at the rat, guys. It helps to shoot at the rat. Off to the past? Oh, haha. <laughs> yeah. You're not that far behind. I do have a video where I uh, do the Abyss in a Serb. Cerberus. I really like the Dark Cerberus. I also really like the Eating Calm, uh, the Stormbringer. So the thing is, is that with my shields, you can see my shields are getting down, but at the same time, A, I didn't fight anything for a while, and B, you can see my shield recharge is actually going up. As my shields go down, my shield recharge goes up. It was 18, and now it's 21. You can have the Drifter Battleship show up in a tranquil that's right but if you do have a drifter battleship show up in a tranquil it will almost i don't think it ever has any supporter sh ships this is why uh by the way guys i go into this little cheeseburger thing and i go configure ship health alert and i change my shield uh our uh, 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 shield threshold to 25 percent and my capacitor to 30%. So that way I get warned when my capacitor is just entering peak recharge or my shields are just leaving peak recharge. It does help to shoot. That's true. And that's it. That's the entirety of that abyss run. We're going to try two more to see if we get anything exciting. Right now we got to wait for this uh, filament to close up. I got... Now, remember, this is Tranquil. It's the easiest filament in the whole game. I got 1.5 million out of it. I didn't check the time. We'll check the time next time. As soon as the capacitor flashes... Boom. Okay, Blast Needles. Blast Needles. So the name of a rogue drone ship it indicates the damage it does. So these Blast Needles are doing explosive damage, which, remember, explosive damage is the type of damage that does the most damage in here because our resistances to explosive are turned down. So this is actually a little bit more dangerous than you would expect. Um, but I'm still going to be able to, you know, kill them pretty quick but like if you see a swarm of blast needles or more importantly blast lances because lances do more damage than needles um you know those guys can do deceptively amount a uh, high amount of damage if it's within the um the radius or sorry within the uh, the correct damage type of the of the weather i'm actually going to show you guys something different too oh shoot not that Oh, shoot, that's not it. That's, not, that's a tracking pylon, not a deviant automata suppressor. Never mind. So this tracking pylon down here, what it'll do is it'll increase the turret's tracking of any ships within range. Not really great for me, given the fact that I use missiles.
it's also like these sites are some of the most beautiful places in Eve, man. Like the abyss is so cool looking. Oh, dude, what was that? Hold on. Also, control R reloads your ammo. Good to do after every round. Oh, decayed large shield booster. Not really worth that much. But so far, I'm at two and a half million in one and a half sites. The other thing is that you can still get jackpots. You can get like the big things like uh, the specialization skill books and other such like that, even in a tranquil. It's less likely, but you can. And this is a sleeper rat, Lucid, Lucid Aegis rat. I do find sleeper rats to be some of the harder names to remember what they do because a lot of the other rats, like Triglavian rats, all of their names kind of tell you what they do. Like, oh, I also I am firing when I don't when I'm not in range, so it might be wise to keep an eye on your fl maximum flight range and not waste missiles like I'm doing. But uh, regardless, so like uh, a, a webbing rat. Like, uh, uh, an entangling rat is obviously webbing, you know. Um, null warper is scrams, null charge is newt, or starving is newts. Uh, but lucid aegis, like, is kind of a little bit harder to remember. So this is what the cheat sheet's for, or you can also look at show info. Um, I think these are just, like, a normal, dumb combat rat, like the rest of them that we've been seeing. He's a murderer at close range, like all drones. Which one? The Aegis? The sleeper one? The rogue drone swarms, like, they're really easy to kill quickly because they're small, but man, if they manage to get on top of you and swarm you and uh, be doing the right damage type, they can do a lot of damage. Reload again. Now, I recommend using T-Zeros. T-Zeros are a good way to learn just the physical nature of the abyss, right? Like where, where the caches are, where the boundaries are, what kind of... Um, Items like this exist, making sure they're all on your overview, all that kind of stuff. T1 is good because it begins to teach you... Well, T1 is... I T0 and T1 are kind of the same when it comes to their effectiveness. I, I mostly use them just to teach the very basics of the Abyss. T2 is when you start to see all of the different kinds of rats. And Stage 3 is when the encounters are sophisticated enough that you start seeing full the full encounters. And Stage 4 and above is just harder versions. Oh, lordy, 20 gifted subs from Bad Boy Smooth. You have been promoted. Uh, on behalf of Big Guy, Patrick Williams, Tom King, Seatham, Peppy, Eben Had, Tristan McDonald, Pirate Gold and Silver, uh, Skyhab, Wall Street Bets, Cool Dudes 428. Julian Denny, Aaron Orr, Max Maxim, A. Kane, Andrew Jones, Jake Hawk, Lads, DHN, Im and important name. Thank you on behalf of all of them and myself. You are very much one of the reasons that makes this whole channel possible. Big boy, you're I like you, dude. You're a good dude. Big boy is a good dude. He hangs out with us all the time. I have never had an encounter with him that wasn't that didn't leave me impressed with how much of a good dude he is. <laughs> Bad boy has his wallet on him. Quick, ever to gank him. You have been promoted. I'm just sad that Bad Boy doesn't get to come to the uh frigate free for all this weekend. You have been all right, and 
We jump through the origin conduit. We're all done. Abyssal con a dead space level one complete. You have been promoted. I'm going to turn off the audio for this right now. Just, just for everyone's sanity. And now we wait for the filament to go away again. And we activate again. All right, a sleeper, Ephialtes Lancer. This is like one of those support ships that you would see alongside a like a uh, Charybdis or sorry, um, yeah, Charybdis Tyrannos. Um, also, one more thing, if you are going to shoot at the biocommative cache, one of the things that you want to do is you always want to double click off to the side of the bio cache before you shoot. So that way, when you blow it up, you don't accidentally stop moving altogether. These are the uh, the sleepers that are special. These are the same model as the Autothysian Lancers, which are the newer sleepers that support the drifters. They look pretty cool, don't they? What is that thing? What was that ball and why did it close up? Does it close up because I killed their shields? Is that what happened? Cuz this this panel was open and there's a ball there. I've never noticed that animation before. How do you know you're getting near the boundary or do you have to hit it to know? Uh I'll show you guys. It is the same model as the Autothysian Lancers. Although Autothysian Lancers, I don't believe, have shields. Like most sleepers. But the sli maybe they do. No, no, no. I think Autothysian Lancers do, right? No, I can't remember. This uh, red cloud. Red clouds are very, 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 very bad for shield tanks. If you have an active shield tank, you do not want to be in a red cloud. Uh... Red clouds effectively cut your shields effect your shield booster's effectiveness in half, but also increase its cap drain, like doubles your cap usage. So, um, red clouds will break shield tanks real real easily. Blue clouds increase your signature radius, which may or may not be valuable. You know, if you're firing at things that are smaller than you, then bringing them into the blue cloud will make it easier to hit them. But if you're trying to dodge something bigger than you, like a drifter battleship, then being in a blue cloud is probably a bad idea. Oh, did you notice how I was approaching that structure, that that can, and as soon as I blew it up, I stopped moving because I didn't do what I just told everybody to do. I was just trying to demonstrate it. That's right. <laughs> uh, I think we have time to go to the edge of the of the map and back. Actually, you know what? I got a better idea. We're going to jump through, and then next time I'm going to just head away from the gate, because I think that'll be the closest place to the boundary that I can get to. Red clouds only increase your cap usage because it reduces cycle time and shield repaired in the same amounts, I think. Right. Um, yes, 
it basically cuts the effectiveness of the shield boosters, but also makes them go faster, which makes them drain more capacitor without being any more effective. All right, striking Damovic. So striking just means no real E ward, only DPS. Pretty well expected given that we're in a tranquil. I've been in faster cruisers in the abyss, though. I gotta say. This thing is not zippy. Now, I will say, like, so one time I was doing a dark and a worm, and I was moving so fast that the boundary appeared behind me. So be careful, because if you're moving too fast, you can get past the boundary before you even know that it's there. But we should be hitting the boundary very soon. There it is. So as you get closer to the boundary, it lights up like this. You can see it. And then as I cross through it, the deeper past the boundary you go, the more damage you take. So I'm going to just sk skirt very closely past the boundary. And you can see I'm starting to take boundary damage. You can see the, the effects. But I'm only just past the boundary, so I'm taking 22 damage per tick. If I go further from the boundary, it goes up 25, 30, 34, etc. So the deeper past the boundary you get, the more damage it does. Little bit of an advantage. So a couple things about that. One, the um, the enemies will not go past the boundary. So one of the things to do with, like, say, uh, the Drifter battleship is to push her against the boundary, and then she just sits there stuck to the boundary, and you can orbit around her uh, manually. Don't man don't orbit around her using orbit because you'll orbit into the boundary and then die. But you know, if you manually pilot, which I'll I've shown before, and hopefully we'll get another chance to see it today. Um, you know, that's very effective. Also, this isn't so true anymore. Um, because, but like, back when there was the PvP in the arena, if you have drones on you, if you've got things attacking your ship, and you dip out of the boundary, the boundary will do damage to those things too, if they follow you. So... And I have heard that there are ways of getting the rats to accidentally zip outside of the boundary. Um, but that's not very consistent. What's up, Jonathan? So after this, we're going to go. Um, the T0 has been just fine. I've done three tier zero now. Uh, I say we step up to tier one and see whether or not this ship can do a tier one. Let's look at my support skills. If I look at my missile support skills, I definitely have a lot of missile support skills that are not uh, not done right now. So maybe when we get back to uh, to Jita, we'll we'll pick up some of those to make ourselves a little bit more powerful. Are you going to switch the rigs? Yeah, we should definitely switch the rigs too.
I was wondering whether or not the uh, the weather effect was going to make it so that like because the weather effect is a percentage of your hit points. Oh well, maybe that would increase it enough, like it compounding on each other. But it was very clear that every purger was better than another extender, and that's pretty common. Like it's worth anytime you look at a passive fit like this. By the way, anytime that you get given a passive fit or something with a bunch of capacitor recharge, because capacitor works the same way as shields, it is worth fiddling with all of the modules to switch between things that give you more raw numbers and more recharge, right? Because the answer is going to be some balance of those two, and it's going to be individual for every ship and for every pilot based on your skills, right? So, you know, like sometimes having a capacitor, uh, like a capacitor control circuit, which re increases your recharge rate of your capacitor, that's usually pretty good. But then there's the semiconductor memory cell that increases the amount of capacitor you have. And depending on what other modules you have, uh, increasing your capacitor's raw amount or their, uh, their recharge time, I, one or the other of those might be better. So it's worth double checking. Now then, let's uh, head to Jita. Gita 44 Caldari Business, or, sorry, Caldari Navy Assembly Plant, Gita Trade Hub. So this ship has been incredibly, like, smooth sailing so far. I actually, I'm not too thrilled about it just because of the fact that it is kind of simple. Um, I, I do like running... A Excuse me. I like practicing my T-Zeros in things like Kestrels and Punishers. Things that will uh, absolutely mess you up if you screw up your piloting. Purgers give you the higher peak regen. Extenders give you more buffer, which will benefit more often. Well, yeah. Yes. If Well, okay. If you're doing PvE, it, in general, if you're doing PvE and you're relying on your buffer, something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Okay, so in PvP, yes, raw hit points almost always trumps any kind of passive regen. But in PvE, your goal is to get a stable situation where you're recharging more than they're doing. So in that case, the buffer does not matter. This is true with like armor, especially, right? Armor doesn't have a, pack, a passive recharge. So putting anytime I see plates and reppers on the same ship, I, some, I, I question it. Right now, there are definitely times to do that because, you know, sometimes you need to have enough buffer to survive and also enough reps to kind of come back. Right. You don't want to get alphaed out before the reppers can land. Uh, oh, seven. Um, but. In this scenario, I want the most hit points per second. I'd prefer using a battery instead of a semiconductor. The raw increase of those tend to outperform the semiconductor. Batteries are very good. Uh, you don't always have the extra mid slots to throw those in, though. Um, the biggest advantage of batteries, honestly, especially in the Abyss, like any Abyss ship above Tier 2 that does not have a capacitor battery on will die. On a long enough timeline... Every ship, those passive helas that you sometimes see without a, without a cap booster or without a cap battery on it, if you don't have a cap battery on your ship in the Abyss and you're going into Tier 2 or above, you will eventually die. Because you will get nuded out in a situation where you can't deal with the follow-up of it. You might survive at 100 different sites. You know, Maybe you'll get nuded out, but there's nothing there to punish you for it. But there will be rooms that you just can't deal with because you'll get nuded out and smashed. The capacitor battery's newt resistance is so powerful in the abyss. All right, let's look. We want field purgers. And also, I'm going to look at the difference between the price. because the Okay, so the field purger is 164,000 with the tech 2 being 9 million. So yeah, we'll, we'll stick with the tech 1 for now. Not a big fan of destroying rigs, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do.
Yeah, I mean, Tech 2, tech two rigs are expensive sometimes. Or a lot of the time. Uh, okay, so what else were we going to do while we were here? Get Tech 1 filaments. What's up, V-Rod? Um, tech 2 perjure rigs are way over Mo train. Right. Thank you. So normally, like, you want to go to, like, an academy or something like this to do this, but I'm just going to do it like this. You just click on market. And then you go rapid launch. Uh, am I using rockets? I'm using light missiles, aren't I? Yeah, light missiles. So, missile projection, rapid launch, launch, target navigation prediction, guidance missiles, warhead upgrades. Wait, what does warhead upgrades do again? Missile damage. Yeah, okay, we'll go with that. Uh, missile bombardment. And light missile specialization. So we buy all of these. And then we go to our items and we inject all of these. And now we just go and I'm just going to apply some skill points. Not a whole bunch of them. Oh, wait, I can't do that one yet. Just like a level or two in each one. That's why I went full armor a lot cheaper. Long live the Glente. Tech two, uh, tech two armor rigs aren't cheaper. Why do you want to miss so much? But by hitless instead. Oh, <laughs> missiles. Well, missiles never miss. Ironically enough. I just realized I don't even have my desktop audio on. You should be able to hear all this stuff. Let's just grab level three of all these skills. Right? Cool. So now we can open up our fit and we'll see that our DPS... Uh, I didn't check our DPS ahead of time, but our DPS is now 125. And our projection is now, oh, dude, look at that. Maximum flight range of 44 kilometers. Wait a minute. It was 28 before. Is that real? V-Rod gifting a membership to Joshua Miller. Oh, seven. Thank you so much, V-Rod, for your support. Uh... That seems like a crazy high jump just for a few skills, but whatever. All right, so we're going to go with Gamma. We're going to buy uh we're gonna go with tranquil not tranquil calm we're gonna go calm tier one filaments okay we're gonna buy four of them or should we do we, we should do six let's do six Do I have enough missiles still? I have enough missiles still. Let's drop all of this stuff. Yeah. Let's go. Navies have long range. Well, no, but I was using Navy last time earlier. For Gammas, should you use Nova missiles? I'm relying on the kinetic locked bonus. 
Oh, actually, you know what? Now that we're here and looking at skills, let's also look at our shield skills. Uh, shield operation is going to be huge. Okay, hold on. So we had 18 HPS, right? So if we take shield operations to three, and I don't like compensations, except for shield compensation. Uh, we don't need that right now. Uh, that's it. Imagine my... My character has heavy missile specialization five plus all the support skills for it and armor specialization. The best ship is the Praxis. Uh, well, um, there's armor. Wait, hold on. There's armor missiles. Uh, Amar has uh, 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 Sacrilege. The Sacrilege is low-key one of the best um, Abyss Runners in the whole game. Like, people give a lot of credit to the to the Gila. The Sacrilege can arguably do better than the Gila in most of the Abyss. But, uh, now that I've done those shield skills, if I open up the thing, I can see... Oh, look! My hit points per second is now 20. So that was another... Uh, what, 10% more hit points? Technically, your best ship is the Marshall. Oh, the Marshall's a fun ship, isn't it? The Praxis is very good. Sacrilege is, is ugly. You take that back. Erlidus... I have long given up on your opinion of, uh, of, uh, aesthetics. <laughs> the Munin is a great missile boat, and I love pointing that out every single opportunity that I get because it infuriates old school Munin pilots. Munins are one of the best missile boats in the game, guys. Hey, all right, cool, Morak. Well, good luck with the uh, not getting caught by a Praxis. Uh, so the Munin is, uh, the Mimitar hack. This thing was, like, so effective in large-scale combat that for years people were calling this Munin online. Uh, you know, in, in Apex level fighting, the ability to project and be fast at the same time is incredibly valuable, and the Munin just simply is the best at it, or at least was. Uh, they nerfed a lot of the hacks, reducing their, their extreme ranges, but the Munin itself got the biggest change, being changed from a projectile ship to a missile ship, which pissed off a lot of people. It didn't get sent to Oblivion, it got sent to the Abyss. It is really good at the Abyss. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for the new custom skin system. I wonder how it's going to work. I want to know more. Badly. Where's our dev blogs? All right. We're going to go for a T1 now. All right. Shouldn't be too much harder, but we'll see.
Because when I first started playing, there was no... Uh, when I first started doing the Abyss, there was no T0. Okay, so Blast Needles. That Blast Needle is going to be the most powerful one. Because uh, it is explosive. Then also this gray cloud that they're in is making them zip around super fast. Which is going to make them uh, hard to control. But they're also going to be hard to hit. So I'm going to just lure them out of there and start killing them here. Where I'm at. I did look for a uh, short range Devi Deviant Automata Suppressor. That'd be super awesome to have right now. But nope. Oh, look at how much, look at that damage pour in, man. Every problem in the Abyss is, uh, is solved first by overheating your afterburner. So I'm going to try to move towards this gray cloud in order to try to pull some range from these uh, rogue drones. I need to lower their incoming damage and increase my, or, uh, and increase my survivability at the same time. Overheating your afterburner both reduces the incoming damage by making you move faster without increasing your signature radius while also repositioning you and making you, you know, get to wherever else you want to be as fa faster than you can before. I'm at 35%, which is below, or which is still above peak recharge. My, peak, my current recharge is 30 hit points per second, so I'm healing it almost twice, uh, what, half again as, be, as good I, as I was at the very beginning. But now I'm at 30% recharge. If I wasn't able to get these guys down as much, I'd be very much in trouble. I'm at 24%. I am in trouble. I'm going to overheat again. I'm back up to 28%, which is good, but not good enough. Oof. Why is this gray cloud not working? Am I going to just die? Ah, there's the gray cloud. All right, good. Now I get to move very fast. That's going to make it harder for them to hit me. But my missiles make it actually easier, or like is going to still probably be able to hit them just fine. You can see my shields are pulling back now. I'm leaving them behind. I also turned around. I'm back up to 30% shields. My, my, my peak to recharge again. Turning back around to get close to the cache. I need to pull them out. Now that I've got hit points again, I need to pull them back out of the gray cloud so that way I can apply with my missiles. I'm going to take my one shot at the, uh, the cache to be able to loot it. Overheat the multi. So o overheating the multi can be good. But uh, I always prefer to overheat the afterburner first. Just because it's it does both. Be like, think about it this way. The afterburner, the multi-spectrum would have mitigated some of the damage, but the afterburner both mitigated the damage and got me into that gray cloud faster. And getting into the gray cloud faster is the only thing that saved me, right? So that's why I say that every problem in the abyss is, for, is solved first by overheating your afterburner. This might not work out very well because he's in the gray cloud and I'm trying to hit him with a missile. We'll see. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not even shooting. That helps. It helps to shoot. And now I'm also going to turn off my prop and re begin repairing it while I wait for this to finish. That's why I brought a little bit of repair paste. I have... That was 4 minutes and 15 seconds, so I've got some time. I'm going to let this repair a little bit longer. I'm just letting everything kind of recharge and chill out for a second. Cancel the repair. Oh, wait, no. Okay, good. I'm about to say, I thought that that doesn't reset it, but it didn't. Uh, yes, this is an Alpha Tune with a T1 Desi. 
All right, striking Lashak. Lashaks are uh, pretty interesting. They do a lot of damage. They ramp up. Um, but they start out with low hit points. So it can be one of the easiest rooms to deal with. Um, but if you let them get control over you, it is not easy. So I'm going to, once again, overheat my prop for, t for a cycle or two. Oh, shit. My goal here is to get within range of the Striking Lashak before he can ramp up his damage all the way. This slow-ass ship, man. I hate it here. I'm gonna cool off my my missiles or my uh, overheat. Looks like I'm still gonna get them. Oof! Barely though. Barely. This would be probably a decent time to overheat my. Partner. Oh, I got him to miss! Fucking outstanding. Alright. Shooting the target was also helpful in a T0. And once again, I'm going to repair a little bit um, while I slow boat my way to the transfer conduit. Blast needles. All right. Uh, I'm going to stay here because of the gray cloud. This is a problem, guys. This is where I die. Maybe I don't. Hey, I made it to the gray cloud. Okay, I'm fine. I'm going to let them try to whip past me. Just like that. And now I'm heading back towards the cache. And away from them. Well, I mean, away being a strong word. They're faster than me. Overheat gun is a good idea, too, for sure. That probably would have been decent against the Lashak as well. I, I'm normally used to being able to get under the gun of the Lashak. I'm not used to being quite this slow. You would have lost this bet. You thought I was going to die? You would have bet against me? Do we think I can do it again? <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. Well. So in this site, I got... Two point five million. 
So I've basically paid off this ship already today. I'm also a bit surprised by how much difference my skills make for the low tier abyss. It's true. Yeah. I mean, the difference in skills is, is it can be pretty big, for sure. But luckily, like I showed, if you get just level 2 or 3 of most skills, you've got most of the advantage. Let's see, do I have any navigation skills I could pick up? I think I've already picked all those up. Yeah. Ah, acceleration control. So I'm going to drop off my loot, and then I'm going to repair my ship, and then we're going to get back out there. If anybody has any questions or anything like that, now's a good time to bring it up. Tranquil. Uh, rogue drone. Rogue Drone Battleship, biggest chunk of hit points in the whole abyss. Short range deviant automata suppressor, that'd be cool, but it would only kill that one frigate, which I don't really care about, so. Is solo PvP a thing? Absolutely. It's hard. Faction Warfare is my favorite place to get solo PvP just because it's like the best place to actually get solo fights if you do it right. DPS. The incoming DPS is 65, which is more than my peak recharge. So that's not great. And you get under his guns. Looks like it's happening. Yep, looks like it happened. I want to get tight and close. I'm kind of going towards him, but like a little bit off, so that way I can keep my transversal up against him. I'm getting closer and closer. And then once I get close enough, I just change my orbit to 4K, and then now I can just orbit him and be fine, probably. Yes, potatoes are gigantic. Like the potato battleships, as we call them, are gigantic hit point buckets.
Now... It might be worth... Like, this is the kind of thing that it might even be worth bringing the correct kind of damage. No problem, man. Uh, yeah, you can do manual piloting by just double-clicking in space, or you can hold down the Q button. The first time you click, it, cl it selects the range, and the second time you click, it selects the elevation. So that's a good way to make it so that you approach a specific place in three-dimensional space. Inferno? Why wouldn't I... I would, I, I would have a... Nova. This was my... Was this the first room or the second room? This was the... Uh, this was the second room, right? This is the second room? This is the first room? Yeah, Nova. Is this my first room? Is this my first room or my first second room? This is the second room? Okay, good. I'm about to say, if I'm at four minutes in already and I'm at... It's the first? Oh, no! I don't... I thought this was the second. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, if I'm at four minutes still right now and I'm in the first room, then I'm super screwed. But I think this is the second. By the way, uh, yeah, the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one was all of the blast needles. Um, so this rat here is the thing. Like, the Stormbringer is probably one of the fastest, most consistent ships for the Abyss. But this rat right here is what kills it. If you get three of these Overmines in a row, that will time out a Stormbringer. But we got we got a couple minutes, so now's a good time to be asking any questions. Check this guy out. My shields are topped off, yeah. Because he can't hit me anymore. What are the same chances to get the same spawn twice? Uh, we think, I think that there are about 13 rooms total. So one in 13 cubed. They're not very often. That doesn't mean that, like, every uh, Stormbringer pilot, when you jump into the Abyss and your first room is a potato, your heart just sinks. Because, you know, you're in there in, like, this several billionist ship, and you're like, oh, no, I'm one step in away, or, like, I'm one step towards just being screwed. And then you jump into the next room, and it's just a bunch of trig ships, and you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah, something like that. I, I think it might be a little bit more likely than that, but yeah. Yeah, you can... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you can now use Pyrolancia as a uh, eating comm ship. You used to not be able to do that. Yeah. Honestly, you have to be kind of... Fa you have to be kind of uh, frosty in order to even survive two of them. Or... Two and, like, another good example is, like, two and then a Drifter battleship can still be enough to push you over the edge. When they made Mutas and Pyro affect the Stormbringer, it changed that I was, pre that I was pretty sure. Yeah, well, like, Tier 4 and Tier, maybe even Tier 5, you can get away with it. But Tier 5, uh, but at least Tier 6, I know that the, the Overmind just has too much hit points. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody surviving a triple potato room in a tier six. I'm pretty sure I've heard of somebody doing it in a tier four. 
you can bling it, but honestly, you like, here's the thing about that. A lot of the bling that you can put on, like, the uh, faction tuners, you gotta double check. They do not increase your damage by much. You can bling it a shit ton and get, like, 5 DPS. It's not going to do, it's not going to make the difference. Pyrolancy, on the other hand, is very useful. I, that's the other thing I was going to grab, was either Overclocker or put Pyrolancia while I was in... While I was at Gita, but oh well. You can go in and if you have any, like, Halcyon boosters... This one isn't going to help me right now, though. You have the right kind of Halcyon boosters, maybe? What is Pyrolancia? So there are three drugs known as agency drugs. Pyrolancia, Hard Shell, and Overclocker. They all use the same slot, so you can only use one at a time of the three. Pyrolancia just increases your overall damage. So, like, Pyrolancia 3 is 7% damage increase to turrets, missiles, Vortron projectors. So everything besides drones, basically. Whereas Overclocker makes you go faster, like, travel faster. And uh, the hard shell increases repers. So a hard shell would be very useless right here because I don't have an active repper. A cloak that makes your ship show up on local and descan a as a corvette. What? 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 How do you show up in local as a Corvette? How do you show up in local as any ship at all? You're just yourself in local. Getting pretty close to killing it, so I'm going to head over on over. The red or yellow Halcyon booster helps. Yes, that's true. There is a, an item that you can drop down that makes it so that nobody inside of it can be seen by D-scan. Like there's a di directional scan inhibitor device. A lot of people rename their ship, right? Because like there's the two columns. There's the name and the type. So if you rename your ship into a different ship class there there unreasonably frequently somebody will make the mistake and and just for even for a split second they'll think that you're the other ship class and you can use that to your advantage striking lashak again Oh good, he's missing already. That's handy. Of course, I say something. This is another time that I really, really like to have a tractor beam, so that way I can grab this thing as I go past, like in a healer or something. Oof, that did so much thermal damage. I don't think I can keep going with overheating. Thirty four percent garbage. Twenty nine percent, twenty five percent shield shield recharge. Oh, missed. Whew. Those guys are rough, man. Yeah, not overheating the gun. Yes, I could have overheated the gun. Eh. 
Yeah, make sure you like the, 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 the channel. We're actually doing some real flying around. Just barely. I mean, you know, you never know. That was the first room. That was the first room. Oh, shit. I have seven minutes left and one room left. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Well, I hate potatoes. We got six minutes and 42 seconds. That is bad. Oh, blast needles. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, do I have... No, of course not. Why would I have anything like a fucking condo... Uh... All right, well, let's kill the blast needles. Preferably before they kill me. part of this shoot 44 fuck overheat my gun yeah fine whatever Yeah, I got greedy and just shot at the cash. What about it? Yeah, I, maybe that was from the previous run. Five minutes left. We're going to be fine. Yeah, because I was even like, oh yeah, here's where I die. All right, so we got three and a half million this time. So we've definitely paid off this, uh, this, um, this ship. We've had a little bit of fun. We've learned a thing or two. And I'm set up to continue to do the Abyss. And I can move on to bigger and better ships like the Gila or even the Mamba. Um... Certainly not the worm. I hate the worm as a as an abyss ship. I should try the the mamba to see if it works. I I suspect that the mamba is not going to work as much uh, in the same way that the worm doesn't work. Although a lot of people really like the worm. I personally don't like the worm just because light drones don't get enough oomph behind them to survive a lot of the things that are hostile to drones in the abyss. Whereas the medium drones of the Gila can can tank it a lot better. Um, and and the mamba doesn't improve that at all. So I'd be concerned about that. But might be nice. I know the Jackdaw is a really good step up. I have three minutes and 19 seconds left. I certainly wouldn't take this thing into anything higher than a tier one. Now, if you get another person, remember, you can use two destroyers in an abyss. So I could actually have a second person in here with me with a Korax or with a whatever Jackdaw, whatever they want, and we could run it together. I am abs I'm firing now. I'm firing, I'm firing, I'm firing. Well, the Mamba doesn't provide any... Like, the Mamba has the same bonus for drones that the Worm does. The only thing the Mamba has is extra launchers.
So if you're having difficulties keeping your worm drones alive, you're going to have the same problem with uh, with Mamba. But yeah, I think that that probably about wraps up my demonstration for the day. Uh, as you guys can see, this is a perfectly fun activity for a newer player. Uh, sure, you might lose some ships, but, you know, every mistake you make is a lesson to learn. And you want to make these mistakes early with cheap ships, so that way you can learn your muscle memory. And so that you don't make those mistakes once you get into more expensive ships, right? So uh, I strongly recommend the Abyss is one of the three things for a new player to get into in order to fully, like, maximize their learning of EVE Online. The other two being Faction Warfare and Market, and the Market. Um, but the Abyss is definitely the best place to just drill your, uh, your basic piloting skills, right? You can use different weathers, different ships. You want to practice different ship types, turrets, missiles, E-War, all that stuff. You can practice it and get good at it in the Abyss while making some pretty decent ISK. Um, you know, we got some pretty low amounts because it's just Destroyer, T1, Tier 2. But if you get up to Tier 5, Tier 6, they get really, really high, but it requires high level of expertise, knowledge of the Abyss, and good ships. Um, is it essential to have skills to overheat modules? Yes, you need to have Thermodynamics 1 at the very least. Solo T2 Dark with a Hawk for the first time in about two days training time. Hawk Abyss is great. Uh, the only problem is that the angel room is incredibly deadly to the hawk. So if you lose in the angel room, it's probably not your fault. Um, you can theoretically survive the angel room, but that is definitely going to put the hawk under the most amount of pressure. Uh, yes. You know, uh, Nolan, my dad, my, my surrogate dad used to tell me, Good uh, experience. Sorry, good decisions comes from experience, which comes from bad decisions. So get out there, make your de bad decisions early when you can uh, afford to, and uh, then get deeper into Eve as you go. But um, you know, I need. If you have any suggestions for activities that I should tackle with Kato Ash, make sure to comment it down below or DM me about it. Uh, if you're interested in coming and joining me, maximizing and player engagement with Eve Online. Uh, or just want to come and get to know the game with a bunch of people that are having fun with the game, you can join the Convocation of Empyreans or the Invited. The Invited is more of our PvP pirate uh, invasion or insurgency group. Uh, Convocation of Empyreans is more our PvE group. Um, next content idea, be the FC for random new bros and take them out on high sec. I mean, it's a cool idea. Also, uh, I've done like tours because there's like landmarks and stuff showing off the lore of different areas. There's all kinds of different ideas, but... Um, the classic new player experience of getting into a cruiser and then not being able to hit small ships, basically. Um, because of the newts, I guess? Which one? Oh, the hawk? No, well, yes and no. The, the, the angels are just super fast and they can apply to hawks. The hawk gets by in darks because it's so hard to apply to it. But you'll notice that a lot of the abyss that they added later on, the Angels, the Sancha, and the Eating Com Room, all of them have a lot of missiles or high tracking ships. So those newer rooms are going to be much harder to, for the Hawk versus, say, the Charybdis Room or uh, the Lashak Room or something like that. The biggest key in the abyss, honestly, the biggest key of the abyss is every ship has a weakness. Okay, there's no such thing as the perfect abyss ship. All right. Every ship has a weakness. And so learning what kills your ship early where it's low tier and you might be able to get away with it is important. So that, you know, like I like to say you want to do like a hundred runs more or more in tier three before you ever move up to tier four, tier five, because it doesn't matter how safe you feel in that ship in tier three. There is something out there. There is a combination of ships that will kill your ship if you pilot it wrong. Okay. You may not have hit it yet. You may not have gotten the room that happens to have three newts and a Charybdis, right? But when you do, you will either pilot that correctly or die. And the Tier 3 version will give you a little bit more leeway. The Tier 4, Tier 5, Tier 6 version will just kill you. 
So, you know, getting in there and and building up your uh, memorizing all the different rats, using the the cheat sheet, and building up your knowledge of the game, getting out there and flying in space. This is like what we were talking about yesterday or yesterday. Yeah, getting out there, flying in space, practicing your piloting. That's what's going to matter far more than any amount of ISK that you're earning today in a year. In a year, the how well you pilot will matter more than how much ISK you earned today. Okay, so get out there, be bold, learn to pilot, and thank you guys for checking this out. If you like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, let me know anything else you would like Kato Ash to do. I would especially like to thank those who support my stream, uh, including Bad Boy Smooth, or Bad, Bad, Bad Boy Smooth, yeah, right? Uh, Sheesh, Erlidis, Lazy One, Ard Ardenica the Queen, all you guys, V-Rod, Punch, you know you guys. I love you guys. TL coming in as a member today. You guys rock. But, uh, you know, make sure to share these this video with somebody else if you think it'd be useful to them. Because we're here to maximize player engagement with EVE Online and raise literacy of the EVE universe amongst the player base. Because that is what makes a better EVE Online. We're all in this together. Thank you guys for watching. I've been Asherathi. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I'm here to put Eve into context for you, my fellow Empyreans. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making it to the end. Just thank you for being so awesome. Until next time, I've been Asherathi, the voice of New Eden, and I'll see you in space. This weekend, free for all. Be there. Oleta. I'll see you. Buy merch!